Okay, this is uh, Thursday morning, uh, March 16th. Thank you so much. Uh, we have two great uh, minds with us who have been uh, doing a lot of work in the field of education. Uh, we have Mr. Shishir Jaipuria, uh, who is the chairman of uh, Sate Anand Ram Jaipuria Group of Educational Institutions and chairman of FIKI Arise. And we have Mr. Raghav Gupta, uh, who is the managing director of Coursera India and APAC. Uh, Mr. Gupta comes with a two, two decade experience and he has uh, led uh, various businesses across uh, Asia, Europe, uh, India. So, so we have two great minds with us. Let me start my first question with Mr. Jaipuria. So the topic at hand today is uh, advancing higher education in India. My first question to you, sir, is that uh, being an educationist for schools and management education, how do you see lifelong learning influencing the way teaching is happening in classrooms today, uh, if we talk of India or other countries as well. Good morning, Rohan, and I'm grateful to you for having me over. Well, as I see that the globally, there's a lot of mortality and uncertainty because of three things. Firstly, technology is advancing at a rapid pace. The skill sets that will be required in future will be very different. And thirdly, the people who will be living will be having higher life expectancy. And recently, in 2020, we came out with a new education policy, which focuses on holistic, integrated, and engaging education for lifelong learning. We are moving out gradually from load learning, wherein whatever was being taught was being reproduced and the assessment patterns have to be changed to be able to ensure for lifelong learning. And this would mean a different kind of changes in the mindset of the people, as well as different kinds of skill sets that will be required for the jobs for the 21st century. Now talking about the skill sets, I would like to talk about a few things. One is critical thinking becomes very important, an attitude for problem solving, to understand things in a more holistic manner. And likewise, the 21st century skills talks about innovative practices, collaboration, better understanding and communication, and also to understand things at a global perspective. Because in India, we were isolated. And now that we are becoming uh, uh, interna interna internationalized, we want people to know things from a global perspective. So that right mindset has to be provided both to the teachers and also to the parents because the parents' engagement and involvement is becoming very important. If you want a change in assessment, it is to be very clear that how do you approach the parents and there has to be buying in from the parents as well. So assessment pattern has to change. Engagement with the parents have to be much more there and the digital competency of the children have to be enhanced leaps and frogs. Apart from this, I also feel that you have to build a lot of soft skills within the students. And when I say soft skills, it would mean building empathy, resilience, self-awareness, responsibility, and decision-making. We have seen during the COVID times that we were tested for the last two years and pe people had to go online as far as courses were concerned. And there was that COVID taught us a lot of great, got a lot of good things, and there was tremendous opportunity for us to be able to learn, unlearn, and relearn new things. So I think more resilience, more issues with regard to self-awareness, and others have to be inculcating within the program. The other feature that I think for lifelong learning is within the school system, particularly, there has to be a student agency. There has to be a voice and choice to be given to the student so that they are able to create their own design, desired pathway of learning and at their own pace. There are a lot of organizations who are doing it and the whole thing has to be structured and has to be innovatively thought of in the school, in the school system. So we have to redesign how we think about school education. 
we have to reimagine what we want to think. Another important aspect I would like to touch upon is that the students today have to have a lot of counseling and internship programs because they should be able to develop their own profiles with regard to uh, what they have done in the past. There should be people and mentors who should be coming from outside to be able to guide them, to motivate them and to inspire them and to talk about talk to them about the future of jobs. And this becomes very engaging for students so that they know where their interests are and how they can move forward. The basic fundamental question is that we have to tell the students as to what is being taught and why it is being taught. Because it is not only that they have to learn certain things or cram some certain things, but why becomes very important in terms of educating the child. And then only he'll be keen to, to understand and to learn in a much better manner. And above all, I think faculty development, because the faculty will have to keep pace with the lifelong learning experience that the students have. So they have to also continuously learn and they have to set, set the benchmark as far as how they are able to inspire the children. So continuous development on professional development is required. A lot of research is required. Pedagogical interventions is required. And for this engagement is required from a larger ecosystem because we have to, as a school or an institution of higher learning, we have to take everybody together to be able to put it together. Absolutely, Mr. Japuria, you have raised some very important points uh, in your uh, answer and really you have uh, ones that are so relevant and that we'll uh, need to consider those points. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, I want to come to you here uh, with this question that, you know, business education is increasingly uh, becoming more collaborative and hybrid. There's no doubt about it. In your view, uh, what are some of the implications for management education that you are witnessing? Thanks, Rohel. Great question. Um, and, you know, I want to begin by saying a lot of the points that Mr. Jaipuria shared completely resonated uh, with me. And maybe I can build on those and then come to say, look, from a management education standpoint, where does collaborative and hybrid have a role to play, right? And Mr. Jaipuria spoke about uh, the VUCA world about how digitization is coming in, skills are changing and so on. And in my capacity as, uh, you know, uh, a leader at Coursera, I get to interact with pros of learners who come to Coursera and thousands of universities who, you know, use our platform. And I see there are four areas that a lot of universities, campuses, where leaders of these institutions are focused on. Uh, the first uh, is strengthening academic excellence in the context of what Mr. Jaipuria said as well about how the world has changed in the last three years given COVID. Uh, second, uh, continuing to drive student employability and placements, again, given the context of how industry has changed, is uh, a, a key strategic area. Uh, third, being able to you know continue to grow the uh, brand of the institution, grow the rankings of the institution is important. And fourthly, uh, to grow the number of students, the enrollments, the revenue of an institution is important. So these are the four topics that uh, we see a lot of leaders in academia focused on. Within this, the first one, which is strengthening academic excellence, is core to what an institution does. And in the context of the world around us changing, this is where within management education, um, collaborative and hybrid are starting to play a role. Right. And let me take an example of what I mean here in terms of collaborative. Um, so about three years ago, one of my colleagues at Coursera went to INSEAD to do her MBA. And, you know, INSEAD is in France. It's a top uh, tier business school. Uh, before she came to INSEAD, INSEAD said, look, before you come, come and take a business foundations course, which many MBA schools do. I'm sure uh, Mr. Jaipuria's institutions also uh, do that. But what they said was take the business foundations course from Wharton on Coursera while you are in India before you come to campus in France. And this is where collaboration is coming in, right? Institutions are saying instead of teaching students from faculty within the four walls of our institution, now because of online capability, we can collaborate with each other and an INSEAD incoming student can actually take a wonderful business foundations course from top faculty at Wharton online on a platform like, uh, uh, you know, Coursera while sitting in India. And we are seeing this happening in many spheres. You know, I might be somebody who lives in Mumbai. 
I might want to go and work in fintech, and I might be doing an MBA at Jaipur Ya Management Institution. And if it so happens that I need to learn blockchain, you know, to be able to work in fintech, and if the institution is not teaching blockchain because it's a very specialized topic, NCI today teaches blockchain on Coursera platform, and an MBA school is saying, look, I can use content from NCI while the student is in my campus to provide this, and that is where we are seeing a lot of collaboration that is happening. The second thing you asked was about hybrid, and this is where we are seeing industry increasingly becoming an educator as well. Given the importance of technology, and technology has always been important, what is different is the pace at which technology is changing, right? And you know, we were all trying to understand the metaverse, and before we could understand it, now there's Chat GPT. So you know, the technology and the pace of technology change is faster. and because of that industry is increasingly become becoming an educator now what that means is if i am an mba student and if i want to work in digital marketing i don't only need to know marketing and finance and accounts and strategy i also need to know how to use canva as a tool to do search engine uh, to do digital marketing i also need to know how to do data analytics and today what is happening is google is saying i will i can teach you data analytics facebook is saying i can teach you social media marketing and so we are seeing industry becoming an educator for students on campus and this is where hybridization is happening where technology related education is getting embedded into management education you know i was i was telling my son who's currently in college that the worst thing that you can do in your mba is study a general management mba which is what i did incidentally but in today's world you need to specialize because today just a general management mba will will be quite challenging but an mba in data analytics and mba in digital marketing and mba with specialization in ai and ml management is where we are seeing a lot of the uh, demand for uh, the kind of the future that we are working towards and that's where we see hybridization kicking in in management education as well so wonderful i mean the point that you raised uh, that you know uh, when the deficiencies in the system you know sometimes uh, from the big institutions they can be fulfilled by say a coursera you know uh, there are options like, like if somebody is teaching tech and a blockchain needs to be kind of learned so people can use that option so of course the the ch- i hope i hope i wish it was earlier also you know while we could have got these you know options but but coming to you mr jaipuria mm, you know a lot is changing uh, uh, if you look at the way you know teaching happens and learning happens how are you preparing business school students for for emerging technologies such as blockchain ai ml now chat gpt how how is this part of your uh, program shaping up you know how are you addressing this it is a very interesting phase of education earlier as uh, raghav said that we were also into general management in terms of our two management institutes which we are running the jaipuri institute of management and the jaipuri school of business wherein we have an intake of 480 students that means the total population of 960 students but nonetheless now we have moved on we have started a course in business analytics we have started a course in banking and finance and we are seeing that the disruption because it is being taken place because of the advent and advancements in ai and automation which is increasingly transforming the workplaces of of today and the future is unknown so we are engaging with lot of uh, uh, platforms and particularly with people like google microsoft coursera and various other issues because the whole digital architecture has to be understood by the children in the different streams in which they are working we have seen that uh, the jobs which were there being done by human has been taken over by machines we have also seen that the products have changed into platforms and for that matter a b n b o o y o and uh, uber and uh, many other companies had dis- disrupted or transformed the industry likewise the core has converted to crowd and we have seen the bitcoin and wikipedia so all these new answers and the new age uh, technologies and new age platforms which are there in the market have to be understood and the students have to be really conversant with them so everything has to be in a digital format and student should be able to accept it the issue is how you are able to get that and to be able to start these different courses and the content is available today in in different formats but the 
pedagogical skills that are required requires much more deeper understanding and to engage the students it becomes equally important that it has to be very interesting and exciting for them let, let us say for gamification when it people uh, have personalized understanding of things and they remove from one level to another so simulation simulation labs are also becoming increasingly important and we are trying to have these simulating labs in which the experiential learning becomes very uh, relevant for children so both the management institutions that we are running are trying to bring in lot of new good things wherein they are able to learn at their own pace and they have their pathways of learning likewise we also are also engaging with the uh, industry and also with ngos so one is to collaborate with the uh, institutions of eminence but nonetheless to have a very closer connect to understand the future of jobs and to get people from the industry to be able to teach these new age technologies whether it is referring to blockchain or to metaverse or to chat gtp the other day i was talking seeing about the gpt4 now the whole revolution that is taking place i mean it is catching everybody by surprise but we can't uh, leave that uh, that it will not be possible but we have to adopt it as far as possible and the new age children i think are very very keen to learn because they have been working and dabbling with technology right from the beginning it is for the teachers and the larger community to understand that these technologies are there to stay and they have to adapt these technologies at a faster faster pace and hence student involvement and students voice as i mentioned earlier becomes very important and peer learning becomes very important for this aspect to really flourish and uh, and become relevant in all the organizations so we have a student council we also have a innovative council because i think startups today the way india is growing the culture which has been developed and the ecosystem that has been there is giving lot of uh, excitement to the students to start something new they want to do something in the social space into environmental space and with little bit of guidance and mentorship i think there are huge opportunities because today we are seeing that every ninth day a new unicorn in india is uh, coming up and it is the fastest growing space in the world so there are huge opportunities the industry is understanding this the academy is also understanding this and presently the reservation which they they used to be there between the academics and academia is now coming down because they want to integrate they want to work together as partners because they want the right type of people or the right type of students who can directly be employed by them so i see lot of traction by, by the industry to come forward with the management institutions so that they are able to get the right workforce that they require no oh, well, that, that's actually uh, wonderful because the way you said you know you are preparing students to go outside and disrupt you know they should not just learn disruption outside but within the institution as well and you know giving them access to experiential education where they understand the technology is more than just the tokenism you know i think that is really uh, the need of the hour as well Uh, mr gupta though you touched upon this point but i want to kind of uh, bring it back to you you know we are increasingly seeing business and technology hybridization in b school education as you also pointed out earlier there are of course examples of top schools around the world launching new kinds of hybrid degrees why do you think it's more it's important to combine tech and data science into aspects of curriculum if you could el- elaborate on this part um i think this was about 4 years ago um i was visiting uh, a customer in singapore a bank and they said we've been doing a lot of analysis and we found that when a new customer walks into a retail branch of our bank and they become a customer of our bank we calculate the lifetime value of that customer right what is the revenue that we will generate from that customer and then there are other customers who come to our website to our app so we acquire them digitally and we calculate the lifetime value of a digitally acquired customer as well and the ltv uh, rohe like it is called the lifetime value of a digitally acquired customer is 2.5x the value of a physically acquired customer and as a bank what we are doing is instead of having a lot of relationship managers in the bank and sales people we are shifting those people to data analysts we are shifting those people to app designers we are shifting those people to 
uh, full stack web developers and so on, because the nature of what we want to take to the market is different. Similarly, I was in Kuala Lumpur visiting a telecom company and they said we are no longer a telco, we are a tech co because technology is so integrated into our business. The CHRO of Axis Bank said the same thing. We are not uh, a banking company. We are a technology company that works in banking and even public sector banks in India, Union Bank of India and South India is currently running a project called Union Sambhav, where they are saying 50% of all the loans that we disburse in India across the thousands and thousands of crores of loans that get disbursed should be disbursed by acquiring the, uh, the, the, the customers from a digital kind of a channel. And the reason I'm saying this is this is a permanent shift that we are seeing in a lot of those industries where your management uh, students go and work, right? whether it is banking, whether it is professional services, whether it is telecom and so on and so forth. And as a result of that, again, a lot of leaders in academia within management education are saying that obviously management education needs to shift. So I was talking to Dr. Das, who is the director of IMI in Delhi, the, the management school. And he said, look, when some of us went into education, Excel was a base skill. But today, Python is a base skill for manager, managers as well. And so they are using the Coursera platform to teach Python and other similar technologies to students who are studying management education. And the reason I was giving these long examples about how banking uh, is changing not just within the country but outside as well and telecom in ch is changing is that is what is starting to reflect in education and to my earlier point about don't just do a general management mba but you know do something which is specialization and chances are that it will need a specialization in a data or a technology related topic you know yesterday when you went to a kirana shop to buy something and you paid with cash there was no digital record of what that transaction was but today, if you place an order on Swiggy and pay with UPI, there is a lot of data that gets generated. And what managers need to do today is to be able to see, look, how do I capture data? How do I clean data? How do I analyze data? And then how do I draw the kind of insights that an LTV of a digitally acquired customer is 2.5x that of a physically acquired customer. And that is what we are seeing reflecting into education, which is where institutions are saying, look, can I launch an MBA with elements of technology, with elements of data in it? Can I actually call the degree something which is a hybridization of that degree? But that's kind of what's leading to a lot of this as well. Absolutely. I think the interference of tech, uh, of course, education is not, uh, you know, untouched by it. And of course, it is. I think we're not very far away when we see a lot of tech, you know, they'll say we are tech first and tech led education. I think that is taking place in mainstream institutions as well. Mr. Jaipuria, you know, since we have another 10 minutes of this conversation, I have two questions uh, now. You know, if you see globally, top business schools are turning towards collaboration for knowledge sharing and driving higher student outcomes. How does your institution enable the faculty to implement this? Before I, before I answer your question, I would like to put the context. So the context is that everybody wants to come to India today. They are seeing India as an emerging market with a population, young population of only 29 years old. And the gross enrollment ratio in higher education has been only 26%, while the new education policy talks about a uh, 50% gross enroll enrollment ratio by the year 2035, which would mean that instead of 40 million students who are into higher education today, it will go up to 70 million students. That means we require almost like 100% most colleges and universities in India to be able to take care of it. And the way our GDP is growing, even if we take a conservative estimate that will grow by 6%, the Indian economy will be of a size of $26 trillion economy. Today, we are the fifth largest economy in the world, but in very shortly in the next couple of years, we'll be the third largest economy. And there is huge opportunity for anybody who wants to come to India. And fortunately, what we are seeing is both the government and the UGC wants more institutions of eminence to come to India and either to put up their own facilities within India or to collaborate or 
do some intervention so that the quality of education is also improved within india and uh, what we have been noticing in the last uh, i would say a year that large number of universities and colleges are approaching us for different types of engagement we are tying up for research based programs we are tying up for faculty based programs also for training programs which we want to do and we have had certain collaborations and some of them are on the drawing board with uh, universities in america europe malaysia singapore and many others i think it's a huge opportunity and is the first move, move, mover advantage as i see with reference to the other point that you mentioned with regard to faculty development i think faculty will continuously continuously to be the key and if they are talented and if they have the right resources and the digital understanding they will be able to leap frog into a different uh, different initiative because they will be in demand i think you have to have the right brain drain people were leaving from india to go abroad and now we will have the reverse brain drain where people will be coming back to india because the pay scales of the faculty is increasing opportunities are increasing and we are exposing our faculty to different programs whether it is sending to iims in india or to sending them abroad for faculty training program and for shorter programs on the plat on the various other platforms so we also have started our own initiative and launched samarth teachers training of academy in research wherein we give a lot of training to faculty both at the school level and management education level and this is not only for our faculty but also for faculty from outside uh, our system that means we are approaching different colleges and universities and their program has been very successful and we would like to expand the scope of this particular program because i felt that faculty and teacher development in india was something of concern and professional development of faculty and their focus on research is very much important and industry participation in research also becomes important so a collaboration with the industry in terms of research and with the faculty a lot of people who are pure academicians are not fully aware of the changes which are dynamically happening within the industry so a balanced view of having teaching both from the academics as well as from people guest speakers from the from the people from the industry is becoming much more engaging and interesting for students because they are able to understand the case studies which are happening and why things are going wrong and why what opportunities or what attitude and approaches one should be able to take to be able to survive in challenging and difficult times so a proper amalgam amalgam between the industry between between the academia between international uh, universities and colleges from platform companies and also from universities and schools in india of excellence we are trying to make these collaborations i think uh, even apex chambers also uh, like cii fiki and others also engaging with the schools and colleges to be able to produce the type of uh, new job skills that are required by the industry so i think there is a huge opportunity and we are trying to do whatever best is possible to give the students the best because we believe that student first should be the right approach and as we started off with lifelong learning for students will become very relevant and we want people to come back to the school because the engagement with our alumni is also increasing because our group has been in the education sector for the last 50 years and we want them to come back to teach and to tell the students their success stories and also their failures so failure today is not a dirty word anymore they should learn from the failure and then only they know what uh, mistakes people have made and and uh, that will become very exciting for the students absolutely i think uh, thanks to the startup culture the word failure has become you know a badge of honor at times you know people to love to talk about it unlike how how it used to be before uh, uh, mr gupta my final question to you uh, what's your perspective on b school supporting career development uh, with learning programs uh, how would you say coursera is enabling this maybe i can highlight two things uh, rohil and these connect to what we've spoken about so far as well 
uh, the f- two things which are relevant to highlight are one uh, which is called career academy that we have launched recently and this connects to the point i was making earlier about industry as an educator right so what we've done is uh, we engaged mckinsey about two years ago and we said look which are these jobs that are going to be in high demand in the industry and these jobs typically require a lot of these skills that we've been speaking about which is uh, you know digital which is uh, data oriented and can we get leading companies in these areas to build these industry uh, certificates or industry micro credentials that i have spoken about as well they came up with a list of 75 such uh, roles and jobs that are exciting for you know entry level uh, uh, employees typically students coming out of uh, higher education and so far we have filled 26 of these certificates so we've created a career academy where there are industry micro credentials available and as an example, just going back to my earlier example of if I'm an MBA student who walks, wants to work in digital marketing, and if I'm studying at one of the Jaipuria institutions, I can also come to the Career Academy and learn social media marketing from Meta Facebook. I can come to the Career Academy and along with my degree, I can also learn data analytics from Google. I can come to Career Academy and learn how to do sales from Salesforce. So this is one thing that we have done, which is seeing a lot of good success. Last year in India, these 27 certificates were taken by 9 lakh people. So a large number of people are seeing career uh, opportunities because of these certificates. And we are consistently seeing companies and employers say that, look, the value of the degree is definitely there in our mind. But a student who's coming with a degree and an industry micro credential is somebody that we would really want to meet. The second thing that we are doing is, and this is launching on the 12th of April, so it's not live yet, but we are launching something called talent pipelines. And what we are doing as a part of this is companies are saying, look, along with the degree, we want to see the skills profile of an individual. We don't want to limit only to a few campuses where we hire from, but as a part of diversity and um, inclusion, we want to be able to see students from different parts of the country as well. And so can we see the profile of the student, their degree, but also what are the skills that they have built? And because Coursera is an online platform, we are able to run very advanced analytics. You can see if a student has learned on Coursera for two years, what are those skills that they have built? And um, the idea of Talent Pipeline is to enable students to showcase their skills profiles to these companies, whether the companies in Singapore or in Mumbai. And we've launched that pilot. It's going to you know, formally launch in early April. Uh, So far, we've seen uh, one particular bank hire three students from a university in Dehradun that they would never go to. But they saw these profiles and they said, oh, this is exciting. And this meets our DEI uh, 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 objectives as well. So we think that bringing Career Academy and Talent Pipeline can be quite value additive to institutions and to their students. And that's where we are trying to complement what higher education institutions are doing as well. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. And uh, we come to the end of this conversation, but it has been uh, really enlightening for all of us, you know, to understand two different perspectives, you know, a 50-year-old institution and a very disruptive Coursera that is cutting at the cutting edge of uh, the the edutech, you know, and uh, blending education, offering uh, the, addressing the deficiencies in the curriculum in many ways and taking it to the next level. But thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on advancing higher education in India in today's uh, BW Education Special Dialogue. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen, for this.